So we have now four presets. Let's try to recall these. I just press briefly on that button. You see the camera is just making a nice transition into that preset. I press that one. I get a shot of the Tesla Roadster right there. We get the two Chinese warriors and finally we get the collar shot all from these visual presets. <laughs> What do you do when clever, wonderful people, but with no professional training in broadcast whatsoever, needs to run your live show? Churches, schools, corporations, every single day they are facing this situation and they need user-friendly control, right? And to be honest, I think the rest of us kind of enjoy it when things are made easy. So having followed Panasonic for years, I've noticed the attention to detail they put into their cameras. And I'm proud to know that Skahoy's line of PTC controllers basically support every single model and feature of PC cameras that they have, and in quite great detail. So let's go beyond the advanced control that we have covered in many videos. Let's innovate and solve modern problems in new ways. And in this video, I'll show you how easy and unobtrusive a PTC controller can be, and how preset position recalls can be taken to a whole new level. With MKA2, the center stage device today, we have a new medium-sized PC controller from Skahoy, and you will have intuitive preset recalls with color thumbnails on the buttons, on tactile buttons, that is. And this is huge. This will reduce the complex routines for your operators, and they don't need to remember preset numbers anymore, but they can simply look at the thumbnail. And the thumbnails are automatically captured from the Panasonic cameras, since they provide a live feed over IP. So let's take a closer look at the MK2. This is the MK2 and it has a joystick, big surprise, right? It has four encoders, it has buttons for preset recall, and then it has a camera selector. So if we try working with it, we press the button here to select camera AWUE20. By the way, one of Panasonic's at this point in time, new PTC cameras. We have the uh, UE20, the UE80, we have an older model, UE70. We have also a um, UE150 in our production setup here. So we have five PTC cameras, but two of them are brand new from Panasonic. So they are all laid out on this controller. And later I will show you how you can easily add cameras to the MK2. If I press this button on the lower edge, you'll basically see that I access additional two cameras. So I have UE20, UE70, another 70, then the 80 and the 150 here. This controller, it's basic, does not in its configuration support more than six cameras. Technically, if you go beyond, if you break this configuration, you can have more cameras than six. But the point is that you probably don't need more than six if you buy this controller. But I'll show you later in this video how you can easily extend so. But that's that's for later in the video, okay? Just come this route with me and and think about your school, your church, your corporation. Do you have seven cameras? Probably not, you'll buy this if you have less probably you have only three, which is a nice amount of PTC cameras for small productions. So it's perfect. And if you have four, five, and six, you just press that button to access those. It's like a shift key, okay? Now we select the UE20, um, uh, and up here we have now access to various settings. But let's first try to actually operate the camera. So you see with the joystick, I can make really smooth movements. Thanks Panasonic for providing this fine grained motor control of the camera. If I'm rotating the joystick, I'm zooming out. So this is how you would expect from a PTC control. I can also pull it up and down to pan and tilt and so on. This is all available to me from the joystick. And this is, by the way, a high, high precision Hall Effect joystick. It means that the mechanics and the electronic readout from the joystick is more precise than a standard joystick. If we look at the menu options, I just wanna take you through what we can do here. But right now we have the home screen indicated by the blue background color of the um, encoders. And on this home screen, we have joystick sensitivity. So if I push the joystick like that, then I quickly pan to the side. If I adjust the joystick sensitivity and I do the same, you'll see that I'm moving at a much slower pace. So joystick sensitivity is one of the features you find on the home screen. And if you press here, then you can always go back to the home screen. We have focus position, we have uh, auto um, uh, white balance mode where we have uh, auto white balance A, we have uh, B, uh, auto white balance tracking. Let's just uh, go a little bit closer here. 
so that you can see some of these effects on our little demo setup. We have some presets available and these are all coming out of the Panasonic camera. And by the way, that's how Skyhoy always do our integrations. We actually look in the list of features they have. We bring it in here with the right labels and so on. So you can expect our controllers to be a perfect reflection or near perfect reflection of the devices we integrate with. And that's not only Panasonic, that's many other brands as well. Uh, we have iris offset here. And if I press the upper edge of my shift key, my navigation key down here, you see that we go to uh, other settings for iris shutter speed, uh, auto white balance mode, etc., etc., etc. So this is just to let you know that we have all that good stuff available to us in the standard class controller configurations that apply to this one. But the thing that I pitched you into with this one is really the preset recall. The preset recall comes out of using the joystick to find position for your framing. And then you press and hold a key to store that preset on a button. And that's what I'm gonna do now. So on Skyhoy controllers, working with presets is so simple. You just press and hold this one and it's stored. And now notice what happens. We get a thumbnail in the display, a little color thumbnail that shows this is what the camera was pointed at the moment you stored that preset. So now let's build some presets, right? And I'll just, Quickly go to my dream car here, the Tesla Roadster, probably a 20, 29 model or something like that. Beautiful. All right. So I'll just make another preset of this one. There we go. And we will capture these two headless warriors from China. Thank you. Press and hold. Oh, no. Focus out of focus. This is not great. So I'll just fine tune the focus here. Much better. Press and hold. So get that into the preset. Now try to recall these. Okay, let's just get for the completion and your OCD and so on. Let's just get that final fourth. And there we go. So we have now four presets. Let's try to recall these. I just press briefly on that button. You see the camera is just making a nice transition into that preset. I press that one. I get a shot of the Tesla Roadster right there. We get the two Chinese warriors. And finally, we get the color chart all from these visual presets. That is so wonderful. That is so user friendly. That is just so useful for these operators that are now taking control of your PC cameras. And you want them to succeed and make great productions, this is the key to doing so. There are, of course, many more presets you can have because having visual thumbnails means that you basically have no memory issue anymore with uh, the, the numbers. Previously, you had to remember if preset seven was the one focusing on the teacher or whatever. And now you can just page to the next page. So here we have additional presets we can set and we could of course go through and put, put the time into doing that. Let, let me just quickly press install. So you can see that on the second page, we now have a preset thumbnail stored for preset number seven. And I can go forth and back between these two pages so easily. So that is just the key feature that you wanna fall in love with on the MK2 controller here. We can do that for every single other camera. So when we are changing camera to the UE70, you see we are back to where we were before with the UE20. So I'll just press this one. I'll be able to store the, the uh, preset of that camera, whatever that is, that looks strange. And um, I can do the same for the next one here, which is, uh, I'll take preset number two. It stores the thumbnail. I go back to this camera, it recalls that one. I go back to this one and it also recalls the thumbnails of that camera as you would expect. So that is the intuitive preset recall on tactile buttons on Skyhoy controllers, multiple presets on multiple cameras. Next up, I just want to highlight again that different models may have different features found in the adjustment knobs. So we already looked at the UE20. If we go to the UE70 and we page through the menus, then the options you find up here for white balance and iris and shutter speed and so on might be slightly different, especially the value ranges will be different if the camera has different value ranges. So that's basically highlighting a point that you'll generally enjoy when you are using Skyhoy controllers. And that, by the way, goes across different brands and models. So not just Panasonic cameras, but also if we had some other PDC or otherwise camera attached to this controller. So that's one thing. Another thing is that we need to talk about secret gateways. A secret gateway is when an engineer, they go out of their way to put something in the controller that makes them feel in control and special and privileged. And that is holding the upper edge on the menu key to get into the engineering menu. And in the engineering menu, you have the ability to set sleep time of your controller 
dim time, you can also adjust the brightness of the buttons to mention that. We also have additional features like being able to turn on and off expert mode that usually sometimes allows access to additional hidden features that engineers like. And what my support staff finds pretty useful, especially when they want to mess with people's mind, and that is when they reverse pan and tilt directions. So in here, if you are one of those guys, two options, either you're kind of wrongly wired in your head and you want, yeah, wrongly wired in your head. I have my support staff sitting over here, so I'm just playing with them a little bit. That's one option, and you want your joystick when you pull down to do the opposite of what regular people expect. That's one option. Another one is, of course, that you mounted your camera upside down under the ceiling, and for that, you usually have two options. Either the camera might support a feature that could inverse the pan tilt, or it's, um, it's something you can do in the controller. But I'm pulling the joystick down, and that means that I'm, I'm tilting down, I'm tilting up. I now go into the engineering menu. I press the, um, the direction to be inverted. And then I exit the engineering menu. Now you'll see as I push forward, then it's actually tilting down and backwards, it's tilting up. So that's the reverse operation that you can achieve by the engineering menu on this camera. So that's right there. You have the same for zoom direction and pan direction to complete the configuration. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the MKA2. I hope that you really enjoyed this demonstration, but we are not done yet because there's so much more to say and look at in terms of how easy this is in configuration. And you'll really enjoy the next part, which is about Reactor, the software running on the MK2. So let's focus on Reactor. It's uh, right here. And what you see is what I actually consider a pretty beautiful layout of five cameras, individual cameras connected to a controller. You find this camera selection with you know small, nice icons here, and it would be super easy for us to add a camera. But let's first try to do something else. Let's try to, to change the order of the cameras. I think we can actually drag this around in the UI. So let's just see what happens if we do that. Yeah, it actually changed around here on the camera selector. That's pretty neat. If we uh, click camera selector, we get to uh, additional details. And one of those that are becoming popular, I know, is that we can color the buttons for the cameras as we want. So we could, for instance, select a different button color for this camera. We, let's just pick green here and another one green. Then we want one that is blue and uh, one which is light blue. So now we have basically changed the color of those buttons very easily here. Uh, we have something called tally index and routing index. Just quickly, tally means you can pick up tally information from a switcher system. So your camera selector will reflect tally state for the camera you're operating. That's cool. You also have routing index. That means press that, send a command to a video router. It will bring it up on the monitor in front of you. Very easy. It just needs a number that indicates the source it should be connected to. And then you need to also select which system it is connected to. That is what happens in tally forwarding and routing triggers. But I won't go into details on that because the really cool thing is how this table works. And one thing that you might um, find very useful, once again, with uh, untrained operators, sometimes you want to avoid them having to mess with things they should keep their hands off. And an easy way, if you don't want to reorganize your camera selector here, you can actually just hide out a camera. So now you see this camera is not anymore available as camera number two, but you did not change the order of cameras by doing so. So that's also pretty neat. Plus, you can also change labels on these uh, cameras. So by changing these labels you'll find here, you'll be able to find uh, other names for the cameras. And uh, I know that this will then update immediately. So you could call them all kinds of things down here. So that is how easy the camera selector is. But now I want to play with this guy. Because so far, we have been working with a controller that in all its simplicity is really wonderful. But if we add this one to the side, we get a pro class controller with deeper options than it just had before with more buttons and so on. And this is related to modularity in the Skahoy ecosystem. What I want to show you is that I have a different project in Reactor, which is running out of this one. I can easily select. It's an MKA2, this one natively, connected to this one being an external panel. So now as I'm loading this project, voila, look at what is happening here on the panel. We have now these two panels operated synchronously or basically they are integrated in a way so that the only way you would know this is the case is because you can break them apart and they have two cables going into them. But they are essentially for all practical matters 
connected and working as a whole. Okay, so that's what we have right now. This um, Pro class controller. And the difference really is that by just attaching this module, I now have my camera selector across eight keys instead of uh, instead of four keys. I also have presets across eight buttons instead of four buttons as it was before. So I basically have more of everything. And you can see as I'm going between these cameras, I am able to um, see these things change around. The presets that we have here are stored differently inside the system. This is why you see other things popping up on the screens. So the menu key that we previously had on this button right here is now broken out on eight individual buttons. So the whole menu structure is also becoming more easy to navigate. It means easy for you because if you are an engineer, you need more control of these things. You, you have an interest in all the settings you can do contrary to your more simple user for whom it was imp important to select the camera, to select the preset, but maybe not so much to operate the knobs up here, except on the home screen to adjust the PTC speed. In this case, we have a menu selector that is basically giving you all the menu pages in direct access on these uh, over here. We also have a preset selection a function here where this button, as you press it, we are basically paging forth and back in the presets. And we have a shift key right here that can also help expose additional features uh, in the menu structure. So basically, pro class configurations will have more features of the cameras broken out into knobs on the controller. Uh, they are designed for eight knobs and they typically have six pages of menu options, but the shift key usually gives you access to even more. So that's what you get by snapping on the side the MK1, which is a module, a sibling to the MK2. These modules are designed to go into our mega panel frame. So you'll often find them in mega panel setups as a PDC or DVE controller in a mega panel setup. But as standalone PDC controllers, they are also very, very interesting devices as you should have been able to recognize from this demonstration. What you see over in the control side of things is that I just loaded a different project in. And I want to uh, actually go back one step and show you how easy it would be to uh, change the existing project that I came from, the one with MK2 solo, over to being one that includes the MK1. So basically what I need to do would be to uh, search on the network for the panel. About device search, you can discover Skahoy panels like crazy on your network. So it's going to be so easy to do that. But reminded of panel or device search, I just want to highlight that if you want to add additional cameras, then it's also really, really easy because going into the device menu here, we have also discovery of devices on the network. So now it's looking for cameras on the network and you can see it's finding a lot of devices and I will now search Panasonic to see if I can filter this list a little bit. And you see it's finding UE80, UE150. I know that the others are also gonna pop up if you wait a little bit longer for these. So that would be adding cameras. It's often facilitated by device search on the network. But for panels, this one, the MKA1, will be looking at those found on the network, we just filter the list here and we select this one. So you'll see this one will now um, blank out. It will not show waiting for blue pill anymore, but it will be connected to the blue pill as you can now see. And then what we need to do basically is to change the configuration of the MK2. Notice this is the host controller, this is the guest controller. And in this list, all we need to do is to say, yeah, I want the MK2 and the MK1 to be connected together. I want this dual configuration. And then I get this guy, this little guy, where um, actually I think I kind of went ahead of myself here and I had this one selected. So let me just uh, get this con configuration out of the way. So basically I can say, okay, there's a panel missing. This configuration is screaming, give me an MK1. I need an MK1. And I can then add this panel by doing like this and then it will snap right into my configuration. So now you see how Reactor, after being connected to the MK1, is showing that I have these two panels and they go together and they are working right here. Now there's one thing that you need to do that is to set up your cameras. So th this, this approach is gonna throw out the original configuration and then create a brand new one that is fresh and possible to make exactly as you want. And therefore there are different ways to achieve this because 
probably what you wanted to do is to go in here and in the project management of the MKA2 solo, you would probably go to advanced, you would make a duplicate of your configuration and then work from there. So there are certain things related to how Reactor works that would be good to know about to manage this. But it's easy and intuitive and beautiful. So that's something we are very proud of here at Skyhoy. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or feedback to us, it is much appreciated. Just send us an email to our friendly support staff. And to stay in touch on more Skyhoy news, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Instagram account and our Facebook feeds.